Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. Here with your host GBHL Tom. And GBHL Damien. And welcome back to the Fall of the Necromancer week. Woo! We're here for our third video of the week now. Indeed. And what um, are we doing this time? We're doing an unboxing. Yep. In our profiles video, which was number two, mm -hmm. what you've already seen. We gave you um, a little hint. We did. And we avoided six of the profiles from mm -hmm. the book. And they are... It's the White Council. So this is the original box uh, that was released, the metal box that was released at that time. Um, to talk you through, um, to to give you all the good heroes that weren't available yeah. up to that point. Yeah. And hilariously, I know J I know James and Jamie have picked up on this sort of stuff before, but this has a painting guide. Oh yes. This box of six entirely different heroes has a painting guide. To paint these, you'll need Graveyard Earth, Skull White, Bleach Bone, Chain Mail, and Dwarf Flesh. That's it. Yeah. You won't need gold, you won't need blue, and you won't need green. Brilliant. Yeah. So there you go, you get those five and you can paint all six <laughs> of these models to their standard. But yeah, this is an incredibly cool box that I believe, and it pains me to say it, when it came out it was £25? Yeah. Is that right? Uh, I believe you actually have the information to hand I out. Do. Uh, but it's an incredibly cool box. Uh, possibly up there in various stats for maybe the most points available in one box. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, 20 pounds. 20 pounds it was when it came out. Pounds. 20 pounds for those six heroes. And if you bear in mind that at today's rate, um, a hero, a named hero was going for between 12 and 15. Mm -hmm. Let's be um, let's be generous and call them 12. Yeah. That still means you're getting these for 72 pounds these days. Yeah. Um, oh, so there you go. It's an awesome set. Yeah. Really cool set. And it contains Thranduil, Curden, Galadriel, Saruman, Erastor, and a Glorfindel. Mm. And we're going to um, jump in, have a look at yeah. the models, and chat through their profiles. Yeah, and you can probably change since as well, because we're going to go through the original profiles first, but some of them have changed. So who's first up, Tom? First up, we have, in the book order, Saruman the White. Saruman the White, who is this Saruman. Now, Saruman, oh god, I mean, this, this has got black stuff on it. Yeah. This isn't new at all. No. <laughs> This is uh, Tom's Saruman who has been stripped. And I need to point out that this, um, we talked about this Saruman a lot in our um, Palantir we special. We absolutely did. Talking about Christopher Lee. Yep. And um, I said that I was very um, upset that I had never bought this box before. Mm -hmm. um, because I saw it in the shop at £20 and thought, I don't need to spend that £20 on these models. And was very sad not to have the Saruman. And Maximilian May from Germany has sent it over for me. The model? Yeah, the model. That is a subscriber-based model, which is amazingly generous. Thank you, Max. Thank you, thank you so, so much. And um, Where are my pretty things? And... <laughs> Why can't I have nice things? <laughs> and yeah, it's it's a really cool money. It is. Model. We, we said this is yeah, our favourite paper model. Summer. And if you are interested, it's kind of linked, you should check out, and I'm being hopeful here, my hobby vlog from mm. last week, where I think you'll see my finished version of this, because I've been painting this guy up yeah. recently, and it is stunning. The, we said it before, but the, the face detail is incredible, mm. and I was really happy. He's yeah. the first, um, he's been the first model where I've ever successfully painted eye bags. Mm. Eye bags, you know, the, yeah, yeah, the bags yeah, under them, yeah. like, and doing that, and getting the pupil in it. And I, I think it's a stunning model. Absolutely yeah, great model. It's amazing. And, um, We've discussed in the, the recent planter that you may have seen that I don't do hobby vlogs, but this chap, um, once I'm done with the kind of batch of painting that I'm doing now, will be there as a reward for afterwards, as one to do. And in a hobby vlog. In a hobby vlog? Well, it was a yeah, subscriber-based model. So well, thank you very much. Vlog. So, Saruman yes. the White. Yeah. So we, we see him a lot? Yes. Yeah. A lot. And we talked about his profile a lot in our Saruman episode about how the good Saruman is incredibly good because of his spells particularly, but his stats are wizard stats, yeah. fight 5, strength 4, defense 5, 1 attack, 3 runes, courage 7, might 3, will 6, fate 3, with a free will point per turn with his staff of power. Um, and he does have a two-handed, <laughs> it says his staff of office uh -huh. in, in, this, um, in this book, but it is a two-handed weapon. Interestingly, I was reading... Um, just going completely off topic, really, but on do. the Staff of Power, I was reading an old White Dwarf, one of the first ones, um, after the Fellowship of the Ring release, and it had a load of FAQs from people who had started the game in the in the Fellowship of the Ring era, so before the Two Towers came out, and yep. Alessio Cavatore was answering those questions, and one was, 
why is a staff a two-handed weapon? Why mm. isn't it like a stave and it's just a normal weapon? Why why do you get that bonus attack? Is it like this this because it's a wizard staff? It's better. And um, Alessio's response is that well, it's, it's just got a bit of magic, isn't it? That's why you get the plus one to wound. And that other similar staffs wouldn't have the same two-handedness. What is it because it, why does it become a two-handed weapon yeah. for a plus one to wound? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's like just a stick. Just a yeah. stick. <laughs> there you go then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he has that. He has the voice of Kurinair, which is a double distance stand fast, a so 12 inch stand fast. And the consuming rival with Gandalf, which. The voice of Kurinair does something else. Affects heroes. Yes, that as well. That's huge. Yes. You <laughs> drunk? <laughs> Well, having That's a twelve inch stand fast is good. Like, yeah. Evil Saruman's got that, but having a stand fast that covers your heroes on a Courage Seven model, yeah, with ridiculous. a free will point of turn, yeah, which means if he goes first, if you've got priority, priority. he can't fail it, yeah, unless he's in range of ring wraith or something, or he's had a stick break. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's an incredibly powerful ability to have yeah. in your um, army. Yeah, very much. We forget the Gandalf rivalry one because it's a bit circumstantial. Yeah, and I don't think people that often will have Sauron on the White and Gandalf. Mm, right. Indeed, a very good profile. Yeah, and Fallen Necromancer was the first time I was introduced. Yeah, and the big thing is that he's got eighteen inch immobilizing command. Yeah. Now he there couldn't ride a horse. No. Um, in this version, but of the, course, no, the good one still can't. He yeah, can. Yes, he can. Okay. Um. But yeah, in the new version, as I'm talking about, it's pretty much the same, but the new version can ride a horse, which suddenly gives him essentially a 28 range immobilising command, which is horrendous. Yeah. He also has big advantages that he casts everything, uh, not everything, he casts Sorceress Blast easier than the evil one. Yeah, it's on So the, you have a good wizard casting, casting Sorceress Blast on a 4 plus, I mean, which I is think, incredible. I think his actual stats and profile are all fine, it's just that he's incredibly cheap. He's, he's cheaper than Gandalf the Grey, mm. and that's where it falls down a little bit. Yeah. He's, Gandalf the White, who is of the same spellcasting ability, okay, he gets a bit extra in terms of his, um, what he can cast. But, Want me to look it yeah. up for you? Yeah. But it's just ridiculous for the points. Look, horse. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. But he's just ridiculous for the points. That's, is, that's yeah. the annoying thing. He should... Gandalf the White should be slightly cheaper, but Saruman the White should be essentially the same as Gandalf the White. Yeah, because he loses... What's Gandalf got? He's got Glamdring and he's got um, the Ring reroll. Yeah. Which are... Which are two rules, but he's got And the, he's got Blinding Light. Okay. He's got more spells, yeah. Yeah. Because he's got Strength of Will as well. But then yeah. he's got Voice of Kurinir and... Um, mm -hmm. That's just that, isn't yeah. it? So he's got the one. Yeah. And he's got two less spells, so that's, he, yeah. should, he should be 155. Should be a bit more. Gandalf the White's 235. You mean Gandalf, I mean, the, Gandalf the Grey? Gandalf the Grey. Yeah, so but... Gandalf the Grey's got two more spells in it. Yeah, but, it, oh, but he's got he's better, better spells. at all yeah, yeah. spell casting. Yeah. Like, you should be comparing and him to Gandalf the range. White. Yeah. Ow. Um, yeah. But he's very, very good, and you often see him yeah. in a uh, good army yeah. lurking at the back. Yeah. Unthemed. Obviously, um, his oh, new profile, Sam and the Wise, is even better, but um, yeah. that's not what we're talking about here today. No. Uh, so who's up next? It is Radagast the Brown who no. is in this box. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it is Galadriel. Galadriel. The Galathrim. And again, this looks like it's been stripped. It has been, yeah. <laughs> this one. This is a brand new box. So here is Galadriel. War Aspect Galadriel. There yeah. she is. Yep. Lovely model. She's called War Aspect Galadriel because she has a special rule called War Aspect. So what's her actual name? Galad Galadriel, Lady of the Galathrim. And is that her name, still her name now? I don't know, you closed the book. It's because you were fiddling with it. You've gone too far. Let's write the back. Oh. She's in the White Palace. So there. she is. Protectress of Lothlorien. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought that had changed. changed. Yeah. So this is her. A lovely model. So yeah, the war aspect. Um, all enemies within six inches of Galadriel suffer a minus one penalty to their courage. Yeah, that's a great rule. Yeah. If you ignore Fury. Yeah, as we try to. Um, she gets cast Binding Light on a 2 plus, fine, but she doesn't have Immobilize, so that, that's the, the choice between this one and the other one. Um, she's better fighting than the original Galadriel because she doesn't cast Being Unarmed, she actually wields an Elven Blade in this version. But no longer. The Elven Blade is gone. Mm. And she does have it, there is an Elven Blade. Yeah. Just in there. Yep, yeah. and she, um, she has three attacks. 
So fight six, strength three, defense four. So the strength three, defense four is poor, but three attacks, three wounds, courage seven, three might, only three will not six this time, and mm -hmm. three fate. And um, <clears throat> lineage of the firstborn, so she's terrifying, and woodland creature. Um, and she has Nenya, which yeah. is the re-rolling fate dice. This is a good profile. Yeah. She's cheap for mm -hmm. a spellcaster, but she doesn't have a mobilise. No. The mobilise is just it, key. She's there really for the blinding light and the terror yeah. bubble. So she's actually less like a wizard, I think, mm. and more like a kind of shade character yeah. or a banner Banner, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. When you put her in, she causes terror. That's not really going to affect your army, though. Mm -hmm. Everything else suffers a minus one courage penalty. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if she got aura of dismay as well. I think. Mm. Well, only having in that, you know, even even in this version now, in the current version, only having three will mm. and blinding light. She yeah. can channel it now, but that that's it. And once she's out of will, it's gone. So if there's a wraith, that's going to be gone yeah. pretty quickly. Because she doesn't get a free will point. No. That's interesting. Yeah. So, do we see a lot of this one? No. No. We see her very occasionally. People like to put her in with the Army of the Dead in some attempt at um, synergy. Yeah. But with Fury knocking about so much, that only really works if you're playing a blue on blue against a good army. I've also seen um, attempts to do the dream team of her and Thranduil. So he puts up Aura of Dismay. Uh, yeah. So everyone causes terror. She has a minus one. Courage, yeah. so theoretically it makes them a lot harder to charge. Yeah, and I think that's what they, because Radagast has it in in here. Mm. And Fury, design. Fury definitely does stop that. But let's assume you don't have Fury for a minute. It's still she's going to be. If you've got two ranks maybe of elves, mm -hmm. she's going to be th two inches behind your line, mm -hmm. which then means her effective range is probably about three inches. Yeah. Which means it, it, it's only when the lines really clash that it'll affect a few models. Yeah. It's a cool rule, mm -hmm. and it might really come in. You might, I can imagine using her um, tactically when the force is broken to mm. move her towards an enemy yeah. hero, so that they're Definitely more likely to fail, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But you don't see her a lot. You do see. You see. I would say there's now three Gladrial profiles, and she's the least thing. Yeah, yeah. Because the new terrifying one it's comes up quite a lot. Yeah, it's amazing for dealing with ring race and just spellcasters in general. And yeah. the other one is great because it has. All the will to do immobilize. Yeah, and the free will point, point, which yeah. is great in an elf army. Um, last thing that's come up a fair bit of late: can we use this model as the new one, Lady of Light? I think so. Yeah, I think it, it's meant to represent the same kind of thing. I think if you were going to a GW tournament, which sadly aren't any longer, they'd say no. But would they say no? They, yeah, they have to because they can't. You can't use Lord of the Rings as Hobbit and Hobbit as Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I'm and Sam too. Grant commented saying on there was a big thread on can you use this Elrond as this and this Gladiol as this and he was like no you have to use the proper one. Yeah, but they have let things go in the past like Ama I was allowed to use Ama as I, will, I wasn't allowed to use Shagrat yeah. or Leader. That's what I mean. I think, I think there's I go slight discrepancy. You ask as well. Not that it matters as you say because no. there's no tournaments, but um, yeah. indie tournaments. I think yeah. The yeah, difference definitely. is she and I know it seems like more she doesn't have the light. Yeah, the, the file. The file. And some people have said, for the same reason you can't plonk a toy dragon on the table and say it smells, yeah. that, as much as it's cheaper, it's the same thing. There is a model for this. Yeah. Go and buy it if mm -hmm. you want to use it. But, and I'm going to put my hand up on this, I've used this at a tournament as Lady of Light, and mm -hmm. I think it's like using one Legolas as another one. Yeah. I think they're it's close cool enough. Look. And it's a cool look. Yeah, and I prefer it. So, yeah. I, I use this because I prefer this model. Yeah. So personally, it doesn't bother me. Those two. I wouldn't use this as the white no, Galadriel. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. But as scary Galadriel. I think Unless you painted a white and not blue. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Because um, I think that's how Jamie's got. Has Jamie done like Some, that? A few people have done it. But I've. Oh, um, no, Jamie's purple. Talking of like we did, we did with Sarah Man, if you want to go and see this painted, I finished her a couple mm. weeks ago. So in my vlogs, a lovely, lovely model to paint. Yeah, um, you can go cool. check her out there. But yeah, her big letdown is that she's meant to be fighty and she's strength three and defense four. Yeah. Like, it would be nice to give her a defence bonus, like, just say, special rule, Galadriel so enraged her defence is eight. Do you see what I mean? Well, I, was, I was just going to go the other one and say it would be quite cool if her strength was, was like, it? six yeah. or something. Like, to, to her being a real kind of spirit or something. Yeah, it would be anything like that. Yeah. But now this profile, not survivable. No. But in the context of the Fall of the Necromancer, they don't have Fury. No. 
So, so those rules are yeah. going to be much, Especially much better. Especially when you have Ranagast and will come on to with Randall with the Aura of Dismay. So and there was a lot of all hero armies, mm -hmm. which meant that they'd have to be charging her, which meant they'd have to take a courage test, mm. six inches. You get mm. the impression the courage bubble was actually there to stop people charging her. Yeah. So within six inches, oh, they're yeah, going to be yeah. charging her. Yeah. So in the context of that, she's a good profile. Yeah. Um, cool. And then we move on to Kerdan. Kerdan, very interesting. And he is here, and he is brand new. Yeah. I think he's a... There he is. I think he's a nice model. Yeah, James and Jamie during Free People's Week said this. I've never been particularly fond of it, if I'm honest. I just I just quite like his... That he's just... Just hanging casually out. Casually. Hanging out, yeah. Just chilling. It's a very nice sculpt, a lot of detail. So... Kirdan is... Um, Lovely face. He looks old. Yeah, he's... I'm in charge of the Grey Havens. Yeah. Um, now, his profile. Um, he's fight six, so elf hero. Mm -hmm. Strength four, defense four, one attack, two wounds, courage six, and one might, four will, and one fate. So he's kind of shaman like yeah. in this profile. Um, in terms of war gear, he is for, first and foremost a counselor and a law master, and he's on the armed. And that's the first big. Real downside to him. Absolutely. I mean, the one attack and unarmed means he's Rubbish. very, very, very bad yeah. in a fight. So, realistically, he needs to be behind the lines and doing not much at all. Mm -hmm. So, you're expecting him to be kind of a spellcaster, give some buffs, but he's only got four will and he doesn't get any free. Um, he has terror and woodland creature. Why he'd be terrifying when he's an unarmed one attack model, I don't know, but terrifying and woodland creature. the first one, mate. What? Lineage of the Firstborn, mate. Yeah. Um, his spells are Awe of the Command on the 2+, plus, Cast Blinding Light on the 2+, plus, and Awe of Dismay on the 5+. Mm -hmm. So he has Awe of Dismay as well. So him and Radagast and Thrandor will have it. So there's a good chance that Galadriel's going to be impacting somebody. But again, 5+, plus, he's only got 4 will to loss yeah, on the go. This is the same, by the way, in the new profile. Yeah. No changes. And 1 might. So you, you've got to chuck... To get a 5+, plus, you want to chuck 3. But do you not think you'd use him for blinding light? Yeah. Because that's not what he's there for. I think he's there for blinding light. And or a command on a yeah. 2+. Plus. That's Which, good. In an all-hero army, you may say, not that worth it. But I guess he's the, they're there against all the raves in this source book. Who and are actually, all requiring, all terrifying. The necromancer, the castellan. The castellan's terrifying. Um, but um, they're all... The final scenario that we talked about in yes, in terrifying. number in week video one of this week mm -hmm. was Fall of the Necromancer, where it's the all the heroes yeah. against all the raids essentially. And there's a battle report in White Dwarf that we'll mm -hmm. talk about um, in the next yeah. video. And in that they say that Curden kind of saves the day with his mm -hmm. order of command. Because all those heroes, they might be they might be um, courage six, yeah. they're effectively courage five. Yeah. And they're normally out of will because they're wingmaster septum. Yeah. And suddenly his aura of command, meaning that they all auto pass, yeah. is key to them um, yeah. to the success of the White Council. And in that it game. was something like uh, when we had J. Clare with his Lake Town with the Saruman giving aura of command, the new Saruman giving aura of command to the Lake Town troops mm. that made them incredibly effective against things like Ring Ray, yeah. Tom Felbeast. Well, this is the exact same thing. So in the right army, he can be amazing. And I think his issue is that he's. Very, very expensive for what you get out of him. Yeah, he's the same points as Legolas. And, he, and he's better in a poor courage army. Well, he's also, think about it, he's the same points as Thranduil, yeah. who can cast Aura of Dismay automatically yeah. Yeah. and then do everything else. Yeah, so, yeah, he's. if he was a lot cheaper, you'd see him a lot more, because he's got the blinding light. I think ultimately you have to, you have to go with Thranduil for your Aura of Dismay. And then go elsewhere for your blind and light and yeah. off command. Yeah. So yeah, sadly, I don't. Well, actually, I think he's a model that I've never seen in a tournament. Yeah, army. I haven't. They're, they're a rare thing, aren't they? Yeah. But, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen them in a tournament army. But he is a nice model. See, so, there's a challenge You're for not somebody. Not looking at any of the models. There's a challenge for somebody. I'll bring him along. Yeah. Cool, cool. Try and win with Kerr then. James brought him in a bat wrap. Um. Yeah, anyway, so that's Kirdan. Now, Glorfindel, Lord of the West. Glorfindel, and this is the original metal model. I think he's... Has he ever been fine casted? And you'll see a major disadvantage of so. Glorfindel in this form is that he is unarmed. Yeah. 
What happened? Yeah, it broke off. Uh, this is my version of Gorfindel, and at some point along the line, I believe actually when I first bought this set off eBay, um, they said the sword has gone. The sword is in here. The sword is in here. But alas, whenever I paint this car up, um, the blade has been broken off. Now, I think this model is stunning. It's really cool. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and I think it's that exact balance of an armoured hero fitting into the Lord of the Rings aesthetic yeah. rather than looking Warhammery in the way I think the Knights of Dolan Roth do. Yeah. I think it's very, very stylish whilst looking very protective, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, I think it's a cool, he's awesome. a damn fine model. And the only real shame is they didn't make a version of this glow from Dolan Horse. Indeed, yeah. Because he does look awesome. Presumably, of course, because he came out for this. Yeah. So they released this for the Fallen Necromancer when he's on foot. Yeah. And I quite like that, you know. That it's, I find it really interesting that um, they released the Fallen Necromancer and all the heroes are on foot. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the meta of the game and the options behind the profiles yeah. means that everyone puts them on horse. Yeah. And then when the film comes around and they go and attack Dol Gordor, they're yeah. all on foot. Yeah. And it's kind of come full circle. Right? So you now have Saruman the Wise and Lady of Light who can't ride horses yeah. either, yeah. which I think is cool. Yeah. Um, Tony Glorfindel's stats are pretty impressive. Fight 7. Strength 4, Defence 7, 3 Attacks, 3 Ruins, Courage 7, 3 Might, 3 Will, 3 Fate. So that is a pretty outstanding stat list. Courage 7 is big, isn't it? Yeah. He's got Fight 7, Courage 7, Defence 7, 3 Might, 3 Will, 3 Fate. Those are the huge things. Courage 7 for a fighter's rare. Yeah. Um, and he wears the armour of Gondolin, which is a special rule. Um, an artifact of times long past, the armor of Gondolin offers the wearer some protection against magical powers. Glorfindel, Lord of the West, is resistant to magic, which mm -hmm. is great when his will's been sacked. Yep. Um, he also is terrifying, lineage of the firstborn, and has woodland creature, and he can take Asphalaf, but obviously without a model for it, it's just a horse, sadly. It'd be and nice if Asphalaf was like Shadow Facts. Has he got an Elven Blade? Um, yes, he automatically carries the And he has one extra special rule in this version. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? Um, little live trivia for you guys. Do you know what the one extra rule Glorfindel got in the Free People's Book? It's almost certainly not in there. No. Yeah, I'm just trying to look at it what it be doesn't. related to him riding Asphalath. On a horse. He's really, really good at riding Asphalath. Oh, he's an expert rider. He is an expert rider indeed. Yeah. Which is a nice bonus, I suppose. Yeah. Which I forgot when I rolled a one when he was dismounted. Whoops. Um, Do we see a lot of Glorfindel about? Yes. Yeah. An awful lot, especially in old hero lists. A Glorful lot. Yeah, a Glorful lot. Oh, that could make it toy. Maybe more pun music. Yeah. Um, yeah, we see him a lot in old heroes lists. Yep. Old hero lists because the fight seven, the defense seven makes him survival, and then the three attacks, three wounds, three might, three will, three fate. Like and was the armour of Gondolin with that being a bit more resistant to magic. So he is seen a lot of the time in all hero lists. Yeah. You he don't see him as much in normal lists, as a normal list with armies, because he can't Oh no, he can he can he can lead high elves. But he has to lead high elves. So yeah. you'd see him in a high elf list, but again He's in not high elf lists, list. generally people might take Eladan and Elra here because you get them more arguably for your points in that, terms of the might. That's the common debate, isn't it? Because Glorfindel or the twins. Yeah, because in the high elf armies you're low on numbers to start with, so you're not going to get that extra wall band in with the extra might points. So that's why people a lot of the time will go for Eladan and Elra here. Mm -hmm. He's very, very good though. Or it could be a Glorfindel or Gilgalad argument where do you want the three fate of Glorfindel? No, you want Glorfindel out of those, I think. Or the fight nine of Gilgalad. I don't think. One to win. I think fight seven gets you above everything, and if anything's heroic striking against you, mm -hmm. to get up above it, Gilgalad has to heroic yeah. strike anyway. Yeah. Perfectly. I think he's very, 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 very good. He's an exceptionally good hero. Yeah. Um, I, I remember one game playing against him, uh, against Craig Harrison's Glorfindel, and just finding him a just nightmare to take down, just chucking everything into yeah. him again and again and again, and him just e even winning the fight, trapping him and just doing no damage to mm -hmm. him because of defence seven. It was with all my ferals, so I need sixes to win him. It's just a mm -hmm. nightmare. Yeah. He, but a very cool profile. He is awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I like it. I mean, he's still reasonably expensive at 140 points here. And again, worth pointing out, we haven't really re re reiterated, but all these heroes are coming into the game largely for the first time yeah. in this book. Glorfindel obviously existed before, but yeah. was defence six. He was an unarmoured one, wasn't it? But he was, well, he, he, was, he, he had defence six, so this heavy armour added one more to that. Yeah. And then they changed that in the Free People's book and took it down, the original defense down five. to five. Yeah. Which is a shame. I quite like the other one being defence six. But yeah, I think he's awesome. He is, indeed. Um, then we come on to Aristor. Aristor. Who is another stunning model. Yeah. Here he is, with his Nolder in throwing daggers. And Aristor's uh, Elrond's counsellor, isn't he? Uh, yeah, chief counsellor. Yeah. Before Lindirka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lindirka came along. There he is. Another gorgeous model, very much in the same style mm. as Glorfindel. Yeah, just without the cloak. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, Aristor, his profile, I think, is great. He has a pretty unique profile that is good, but isn't overpowered by any means. Mm. He's fight six with a three plus shoot value, which is important. Strength four, defense seven, so that's all good. Two attacks, two wounds, courage five. One might, one will, three fate, which is an interesting way round. And mm. I quite like that. He's 75 points. Um, he carries an elven blade and he wears heavy armor and he also c carries, and this is what he's kind of shown in the in the model having, um, Nolder in throwing daggers. And he does have the ability to, he can upgrade to having an elven cloak. Um, the cool thing about his throwing daggers is he can uh, re-roll any failed to wound rolls when throwing these daggers. And it says in combat they function as an ordinary hand weapon. Oh, that changed. So basically based on that, you'd say that the only re-roll he gets is when he's throwing them. Which is interesting. But on this, Aristory, the current version, Free Peoples, mm -hmm. Aristory rolls any failed rolls to wound made when throwing these daggers or using them in a fight. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's amazing because one mm -hmm. of the questions was. How's that it? was an FAQ. It was an FAQ. It was that, you, but he couldn't use throwing, you can't use a throwing weapon in a fight. Oh, God, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. This is actually an interesting thing, if many of you don't know. This was one of the questions that we mm -hmm. put together our community FAQ, Sony's GW, and it was one of the questions that they refused to answer yeah. because it was too obvious, because you can't put everything yeah. in. And it is. It says, in the current book, Aristor re-rolls any failed rolls to wound made when throwing these daggers or using them in a fight. Mm. And the question was, can Aristor use his Noldrun daggers in a fight? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think to this day that's still in the community. Yeah, like so. It's just absurd. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes. Yes, he can. But yeah, does he have an Elven Blade still? Uh, he does indeed. He does. So yeah, he's a very good profile, but with that one might and only two wounds, um, two attacks, he is slightly vulnerable. He has the three fate, yeah. but I think he's a quite defense a seven though. Yeah, defensive. I think he's great, but in a, in the list that he's in now with the high elf list, you, again you're missing out on the might. You're putting a lot into your troops, and then you're taking a hero with just one might. Well, I think he's good for the points at low points, yeah. but also you could see him combining with the twins. Yes. So for two hundred and twenty points. Yes. You get two warband leaders. Yeah. You get seven mine. Yeah. And suddenly you're so that you're then at kind of two 105 point heroes. Yeah. 110. Point and that's heroes. what you see yeah. often. Lots of high elf armies are built around the two twins and then Aristor. Mm. Because that's a very good way to get your to get good fighty heroes in it and not too expensive. Concept. Interesting to note that he and this is important these days. Mm. That he re-rolls wounds when using the Noldrin daggers. Uh, yeah, and not with the Elven not Blade. Not with the Elven Blade. Which means, if you... I suppose a dagger you can still faint with. Yeah. You do that. If but he's decided to go two-handed, mm. he doesn't re-roll wounds. No. For one thing, because he's using the Blade, not the daggers. And, if he's using the daggers, if he re-rolls the wound... Oh, that'd be it's after the tide a tide fight. fight. Yeah. yeah, if you use the Blade yeah. to... Yeah, you'll the, have to state You'll this, have to yeah. declare yeah. If, you're, if, you've, if the fight's tied and you're rolling a roll-off. Yeah. You need to declare whether or not you're using the blade. That's in the FAQ now, isn't it? That yeah. you have to state that you're using the Elven Blade. Yeah, you're so only Rivendell the blade. Knight, say if it's in a fight, has to state whether it's using its Lance or, or its, its Elven Blade. Because it, it was, again, it was fight. another stupidly obvious one where yeah. there was a lot of people who were claiming they were doing that or they were shielding <laughs> yeah. where you're using your shield and then saying, do I still get the bonus of a blade? And the answer is no. You have to use it. You have to, it's only if you're using the blade you get the bonus. Yeah. 
So yeah, that is an interesting one on Aristotle for that. So again, look out, if you mm. come up against Aristotle, if you tie a fight with him and he wins mm. it, he does not get to re-roll those wins no. against you. Just stop yeah. it. But he's a cool profile and a lo another lovely model. Really, yeah. really gorgeous models. And then the uh, monkey twins. Yeah. <laughs> so we go. Um, next one is Thranduil. And the last one. Yeah. It is Thranduil. Classic Thranduil. I mean, who's this guy? <laughs> this guy isn't fabulous. He's not, he's not the Thranduil we know and love now. That's not Lee Pace. Very, very different look. Yeah. Not, not a huge surprise, of course, because no. um, nothing to base it on, but GW having a punt at what the King of Mirkwood might look like. And he, yeah, I, I like him. It's a nice model. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good model. And he's got a staff. Yeah. And people, when they use him, often forget that. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to bash or yeah. bash or stun. <laughs> stun. But he, he can stun, adding to his not and small list of Well, actually, abilities. looking at this original profile, it says Thrandall wears armour and an elven cloak. So he gets the cloak of standard. He carries an elven blade, elf bow, and an oaken staff, and it does not say two-handed weapon. Did it, it used to say that in that version? Uh, it does for Saruman. So it would specify whether yeah, they were so two-handed weapon. so it's not a two-handed weapon. Whereas now... Oh, uh, hang on. Now he has armour, elven cloak, elven blade, elf bow, and the circuit of kings. Doesn't he doesn't have a staff. So he can't... But he, no, he, he, he can't he's holding it, it because he's holding it. Weapon. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so, but weapon. it's a one-handed staff, so it's even better. Because he doesn't lose the mind. He doesn't, he minus doesn't one. have a, in the Free People's Book, he doesn't have a two-handed weapon. Mm -hmm. Oh, ain't that interesting. Yeah. Because if we look at the dwarfs, um, oh God, all their axes are pressure. Two-handed axe. Gimli is armed with a two-handed axe. Mm -hmm. Um... Barlin is armed with a two-handed axe, so it does say if they have a two-handed yeah. weapon, which means so he can stun without having to go two-handed. Yeah. God, that's worth thinking about. Yeah. Cool. Um, You've painted this guy. Yeah, I have. Like, like the model. Yeah, I really like him. Oh yes. Really, I mean these these models were coming out of like golden age of Lord yeah. of the Rings. All of these good hero sculpts are just stunning. Yeah. And bear in mind these were three pound fifty each. Just gonna try and find out who sculpted them. It'll be the Perry twins. Probably. The box probably says it actually in these days, doesn't it? Probably. In the old days where they didn't mind telling you who painted them. Who sculpted them? They, these so have so. got they've got Perry twins written all over them. But um yeah, his profile is five six. Two plus shoot value, which is new. First time oh no, game. Juan Diaz. It was Juan Diaz who did him. Oh. Um, fight 6, 2 plus shoot value, strength 4, defense 5, 2 attacks, 2 wounds, courage 6, 3 might, 2 will, 2 fate. But for 90 points that's a that's pretty strong, it's similar to Legolas. Um, and the big things, thing is that he gets the circlet of kings. Now in the original version this is not as powerful as it is today. Um, the Circlet Kings, an ancient heirloom of Thranduil's line, this circlet allows him to cast the magical power or of dismay once per game. This spell is automatically cast and no will points need to be expended. That was it. End of oh, story. No. So yeah. And he's a cool profile, the two plus is just cool for the shooting, but you'd still prefer Legolas's shots or Haldir's even. And importantly at this time it was only him. Yeah. He would have a two plus shoot yeah. though, that was it. Yeah. <clears throat> So you'd get really annoyed when Thranduil missed. Yeah. And you could cast Aura Dismay. Yep. Very, very handy. Yep. So it makes your arm remember yep. when he came out, you can channel it. And I think for 90 points here, Thranduil is still very, very good. Yeah. But he's not the same as he is now. He's now even better for what his What was points. his war gear? Uh, armor, Elven Cloak, Elf Blade, Elf Bow, Staff. Yeah. So now, as we said, he's got he's got the single-handed stuff. Yeah. He's got um, all the other stuff, the blade and everything. Same stats. He also has the Circlet Kings, which allows him to cast Aura Dismay and Nature's Wrath yes. once per game. Which is huge, because it's on a six. Yeah, it's, it's been cast on a six. Automatically. Which, generally speaking, if your opponent's clever, means it comes off. It means if you if you play Thranduil yeah. once per game, you'll get, you'll get Nature's Wrath. I mean, the, the way to use him is to either do it when they've got somebody with one will left and no might yeah. so they need to roll that six and they're generally not going to or you just pull him enough so that he misses the heroes in the bubble and it just knocks all the warriors down. I've used him to 
not even dismount ring race, but to draw will. Yeah. I, I've moved him against the ring race on a fell beast that has no might and cast it, and they've got ten will, knowing yeah. it's not going to come off, but going, what are you going to throw? Four, yeah. five, six? Yeah. And famously, of course, the best use of Thranduil in the history yeah. of the world was Jamie Givlin um, casting it in range of three ring race on fell beasts, and Ed rolling four dice yeah. with two might, so needed a four plus. Yeah. And, and he got, got a three highest, plus. and all three got dismounted. mounted. very, 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 very He unlucky. can, but it, it does, have, and it's that threat. Whenever yeah. I've played him, it's like, you can't, it doesn't matter if you, you it's, it's mm. normally, oh, I want to win priority mm. so that I can charge his lines. But it's like, if you win priority and he's lurking there, you have to be very, very, he's an extra threat you need to think about with your heroes. Yeah. Thryden's very, very good in my army as a counter because yeah. of his extra will points. Yeah. And so putting him in the... Oh, the three will, yeah. I think he's only got two. Yeah, two will. But the big... But he's got more than a neuro captain. Yeah. Yeah. For, and that's what turned that game that when we played together is that Bolg managed to get into Thranduil and kill him. And that Taking shut, off the aura shut of the down the aura of the smoke, yeah. which was, can be equally huge against an evil army with no fury. Like the best armies do. ripple you. Uh, fun fact, I just had a look through, by the way. Of all these um, fallen necromancer mm -hmm. models, the Perrys sculpted the plastic um, wood elves. Really? The wood elf sentinels and the necromancer. Wow. That was it. Wow. Everything else was done by the people. Yeah. We might talk about that a bit later. But yeah, um, very cool profiles. He's incredibly efficient. You see him all the time now. Yes. He's, um, you know, a lot of people are using the new model for him. Yeah. Um, but generally giving him the armour and generally giving him the bow. But he can all. Oh, the other thing we didn't talk about is the Merc of Guard upgrade. Yes. In the, new, in the Free Peoples. Yeah. Um, as was the way with these source books. He can pay two points to upgrade Wood Elf Warriors to a two plus shoot value. Yeah. You are a fan of this. Um, sometimes, yeah. I was recently in Free Peoples Week, Jamie said he wasn't. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think he said that I was. It was just in my thousand point list that won um, the Throne of Skulls when I kind of first took a thousand point elf force. Mm. I mean, the the main rationale was that I didn't have that many models, yeah. so this was a good way of bumping up the points. But I just thought that giving them the two plus shoot value meant that with the move and shoot, it meant that they were normal elves. So I was moving them, but still getting a three plus. So I was deliberately using his just to make them normal elves at shooting. And it does also have a big bearing on um, if you have throwing weapons. Yeah, and so that's because I gave all my elf blade wood elves, because basically I was taking eight, eight, eight of the, the types of wood elves, and I gave all of the blade ones throwing weapons and gave them the Mirkwood <laughs> guard upgrade. So they're incredibly expensive, but they were very, very effective. Mm. I mean, I think whenever I've played with them, and I haven't played with them that much, I've gone for the upgrade. Yeah. I think on the turn then you, that you don't move, mm -hmm. they're all hidden. Yeah, I think I think I even gave. I think that I might have in one list given all the spearmen throwing weapons and all the blademen throwing weapons on with the Merkwood upgrade, and it makes your opponent spend their might to heroic move to stop you m moving first. It's terrific. They're so scared against, of it. You can't up against a bow line of two plus shoot values that's standing there and waiting for you to mm -hmm. come to it. It's horrendous. Particularly strength free bows. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very viable upgrade. Yeah. But again, it is two another points, thing. Though. Yeah, it's another thing that added to his profile. Mm. I guess the two points thing is interesting because it's if you have at a low points value where you have even less numbers than mm -hmm. normal, let's say you're at 400 points or something, then your elves without this are going to cost 10 points each. Yeah. So every five of them you upgrade to two plus shoot value, mm -hmm. you lose an elf. Yeah. Now I think at a thousand points, you can afford to lose yeah. maybe three yeah. elves and get 15 2 plus shoot yeah. values. But then at 400 points, can you can yeah. you really afford to lose that extra yeah. body? In my 700 point list that I've been thinking about for Nova, I don't have the upgrade. Because that would be the thing, wouldn't it? Because it lowers your break point, yeah. not by a great deal. Mm -hmm. But then your question would be, I guess you could work out statistically, that does having one more shoot value, will that kill enough of the enemy to yeah. justify losing the body? Because I, I always look at it with throwing weapons, it's the mm -hmm. same thing. And I, I always think yes. Yeah. That I reckon having, if you have 10 archers, then um, upgrading them all is going to cost 20 points. Yeah. So you could either have 12 archers with 3 plus, 2 or 10 archers. And I think 10 archers shooting every turn with a 2 plus will get you those extra hits. Yeah. And get you those extra wounds to kill potentially 2 or 3 enemy models. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. So what, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, I don't use the army a lot, but I'm a fan of the upgrade. The other reason why the upgrade could be good is that you're, con you're sometimes confined by the bow limit. 
So even though you've got those extra 20 points, you can't yeah. get that money back yeah, yeah, in. So absolutely. it helps with the bows that you do have. And so sometimes that was elf reason. armies, particularly around... I know Jamie likes to chuck in the woeses, but around mm -hmm. 500 points, they have trouble get, their, yeah. their war, war bands are full. Yeah. What do you do with them? And you've you got Sentinels in, potentially, but yeah. you could Nothing do them more up to that. Yep. Mm. Fangio's very powerful. Um, so I think out of those, if we were to rank how effective they were... <sighs> rank them? Oh, God. But they're all different heroes. Yeah. I think... So six, sixth place is Kurdan. He's the worst. I think you've got to say Galadriel would go fifth. I want to put Galadriel sixth. Worse than Kirdan? No. No? No. She's better than Kirdan. I think they're, bo extra... they're both profiles that you'd never take them. Yeah, but for an extra 35 points, you get at least three attacks, three wounds, yeah, instead of one and two. Yeah, yeah. And you get yeah. the um, terror bubble. Yeah. It's, it's hard because they're not all the same point yeah. value, which makes yeah. one. But yeah, so Kirdan, Galadriel. Then you go Aristotle, Aristotle, even though he's good. And now it gets tricky. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd say Glorfindel. Because mm -hmm. I think Glorfindel's a powerful hero, but he won't affect the game in the, in the same, same way, way. Thranduil. And there are other models that could kind of fill the Glorfindel yeah. role. Then Thranduil, and then Saruman the White, who's just yeah. bent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's our winner in terms of profile, as well as in terms of model. Um, yeah. For the models in here? <sighs> yeah, it's probably Saruman, but then Glorfindel is cool. Well, I was going to go for Glorfindel, so if we say one each. Yeah, Glorfindel yeah. gets the model, Saruman so gets the So unarmed, Glorfindel and S Snooker Saruman are our favourites yeah. from this box. Ooh. So there we go, yeah. there is uh, the White Council unboxing, it's a beautiful box, mm -hmm. it probably goes for silly money on eBay now Yep. Um, to get them all in metal. But you but can get them in fine cast. Um, yeah, they're, they're all, a lot of them are available individually now, aren't they? Yeah. There's fine yeah, cast yeah. things for like 10 quid each. That's yeah. actually, I don't know what I was talking about theoretically. They are all yeah. available, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're £10 each. They're £10, yeah. so it costs you 60 instead of 20 I don't know if Kurdan's available. Maybe not. But definitely Snooker Saruman is. Yeah. And I think Galadriel. Yeah. I'm not sure about the others. But um, now I've got that Saruman, I do have all of them, which is very good. All the Saruman? Saramai. No, all of the... Ah, the White Council. White Council. Cool. Yeah. But there you go. I hope you like that. Um, let us know what you think of these heroes in the comments yes. below. And we will be back uh, tomorrow, tomorrow or a, a day after, but for our next Fall of the Necromancer video, mm -hmm. where we will be looking at the hobby side mm -hmm. of the Fall of the Necromancer book and, in a bit of a twist, yeah. the coverage, the kind of yeah. white dwarf coverage to see um, what they did as part of the release. Mm -hmm. And join us for that. Yeah. Join us, whatever. Yeah. Join us, faz, 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 that. <laughs> Until then, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, support Jamie on Patreon, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Support your hobbit hobby. And as always, happy strategy battle gaming.